So this is my next unit. These ones. Um, that was quite nice. Normally, I mean, these are only available online off of the Games Workshop site. And normally when you get them, when they come, they come in a plain white box. But look, it's rather nice, I thought. Hmm, yeah. So, yeah, here we go. Next unit, three fiends. Um, having a, oh, excuse me, having a quick flick through. You've got their three heads. You've got Fiend A, Fiend C, and Fiend B is either Fiend B or a Blissbringer. And um, as far as I can tell from the stats, the only thing is um, he's a little bit tougher, right? There's no real difference between these two. But even though visually they look the same, um, there are different parts for it. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, the photos look exactly the same, but they do have different part numbers. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, and yeah, what you get is two sprues, like so. Gives you an idea of the size. There's the, uh, the multi-breasted torso of that one. There's his claws, it gives you an idea of the size. And there's the front leg, back leg part of another one. So looking forward to this. Um, yeah, a bit more slanesh for me. And uh, um, yeah, let's get snipping and gluing. Well, that took a lot longer to build these than I thought it would. Um, I enjoy the, the construction. I enjoy the building of the models as much as I enjoy painting them, but Games Workshop, sometimes you are unnecessarily complicated. You've got things like, um, you've got halves of things where one solid piece will do. You've got like this piece here has a very, very slight join there. And then there's a belly there. And then you've got to stick on the other half of the torso there. I'd rather just have a torso that you stick on the body. Do you really need to have the modeling challenge of sticking separate toes on? Um, it's just very, very fiddly and very time consuming. So that's uh, Fiend A. Um, Fiend C, same thing again, separate toes, odd way of doing things. You know, there's one part of the chest, there's another part of the chest. You've got to glue it to there and there. But if you put one on first and then try putting the other one, the glue hasn't set on that one. So as soon as you push on that one, that one starts moving, which is a bit of a faff. But that's that one. I've gone for this Bliss Bringer. Um, he is pretty much the same as that, except he's got a separate head. He's got a, a fancier loincloth and fancier claws. He's got jaws, uh, jaws, jewels on his claws. That's not easy to say. Um, yeah, he's got this lovely uh, ponytail affair there, and you've got a choice of two different uh, uh, antler things. So I've gone for the backwards-facing antlers there. All right. So uh, they're all assembled. But as I say, it took longer than I thought it would do to do so. Um, let's go through them one by one then. Um, so this is yeah, this is A. All right. And that's the head that I've chosen for A. You can see he's got three eyes on each side of his head, or her head, or their head. You know, it's hard to uh, tell uh, or know what, how to um, call them, you know? Um, so that's that one. Fiend C, I've given him, her, they, the fancy uh, headdress. All right. I love the pose on these, the, the, the poses. There's real animation in them. And I've, uh, I've been on YouTube just to see if there's any painting tutorials and stuff like that. And uh, there's lots of videos, um, you know, the animated scenes from the games. And boy, these are fast. And uh, they're always leaping in the air and rolling and everything. They're not just like some sort of like centaur. All right. And then the fancy one, the Bliss Bringer. There's the ponytail and the fancier head. 
the fancier claws with the jewels on it and the fancy loincloth. Now painting wise, yet again, what I'm having to do is um, attach some parts with blue tack. So in the case of this one, the uh, loincloth is just blue tacked in place and all three heads are um, blue tacked in place. If they weren't, how on earth am I supposed to get to all the uh, lovely detail under there if I've got to get my paintbrush up and under and in there? So all the heads are going to come off after priming. Um, I'll come back once I've primed and base coated, and this is the next thing. Um, those uh, um, last guys I made, the goatee ones, um, I did them in quite a dark skin tone, but I'm thinking I might go lighter for these. I'm not, absolutely not going to go the uh, the purple tight route. They're going to be black, I know that. But I'm thinking of, yeah, going a lighter skin. Um, but also I was thinking about maybe doing what I've done with the Seekers and maybe doing something like that. So I don't know. I don't know whether to go violety or more like this but I'll, I'll make a decision and I'll come back once um, once uh, I've got underway so here we go taking the sub assemblies apart like so and base coated in pallid witch flesh I'm going to see how we go with that um, I've got one of my last fellas watching over me because I don't want I don't want every unit to look exactly the same so uh, so he's going to be a guide as to where not to go with the color scheme and also with the claws as well the claws I'm uh, I'm thinking more and more are going to be uh, are going to be black all right so I think the next step is uh, do a mix of um, the medium with Drucci Violet, just to tint this and see whether um, I like it or not. Well, the stain of the uh, Drucci Violet over the pallid witch flesh um, seems to have worked. Quite happy with that. It's stronger in some areas there, but that's where the um, all the strapping is going to be picked out. So it's not going to be so apparent once I'm done. As you can see, I'm. Uh, working on his tights or her tights or their tights um, which are the same as um, the goat boys all right um, that's going to be my uniform color um, leggings and stockings and uh, tail sheaths are all going to be the same color but then there's going to be as I say variations in the color so I'm quite pleased with the the pallidness of that um, I was at my local shop yesterday and I got this colour that which I've never done before uh, shyish purple um, which apparently is an almost black purple and uh, I'm going to be using that for uh, the ponytail of the big fella and um, I'm going to put them on the claws and see how they look all right um, I think that's about it. Oh, I've been starting to do the little loincloth affairs and also um, the eyes. Oh, sorry. Doing the eyes. I, I, I rim the eye sockets in uh, a crimson, but I, w I w really want it to stand out that, um, you know, you've got... Um, multiple pairs of eyes so uh, um, I've gone for yellow because I figure that's a big contrast there's not going to be anything else yellow on these models uh, the question mark I've got right now just like I had last time is on color scheme their um, back spines here I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be doing with that um, I painted them in Kislev flesh and I'm going to stain them but with what I'm don't quite know at the moment so um, I'll let you know how I got on with that well underway now quite pleased with the the back spine things 
um, that was Kislev flesh I think it was um, and I've shaded it with that stuff all right and I was uh, so impressed with that that I've uh, continued the theme and I'm doing it on the toes and claws and also oh, the uh, the horns as well all right so that's that um, started on all the all the strapping and stuff usually this is done um, in black and I did toy at the beginning with going for a real monochrome uh, color for these um, but uh, in the end I've decided to uh, put some gold in he's uh, or they or she are looking like a uh, is it Exus Zesus the the Persian uh, Emperor in 300 I think this is how it's going to look it's not going to be as shiny as this because I've got to uh, I've got to dull the uh, all the copper down with uh, Agrax earth shade but uh, yeah he's going to be a bit shiny um, yeah this is the shyish purple which I'm very pleased with I thought it was going to be much darker than that but that's quite nice in and of itself it's not that far off actually my home concoction although this is of course a much glossier version but it's not that far off oh having said so now i've looked like this maybe oh, forget that bit um so yeah all on track i'm just picking out all the uh the goldy coppery brassy bits at the moment um as i say I'm, then i'm going to be darkening them down um and that's about it at the moment no nothing much else to report um doing the separate loincloths as well um, of course once I've done all the all the goldy colored bits I've then got to go in and pick out all the jewels in white ready for their contrast palette colors or uh, um, transparent colors I mean you know on this one we've got a jewel slap bang on the uh, on the thumb joint there and um, the uh, the fancy supery dupery one um, is this the fancy super dupery one? This isn't the fancy super dupery one. This is a bog standard one, but still has jewels embedded in the claws. So I've got these all messed up now. And this is the super duper one. Has uh, jewels going all down the length of the claws. So, uh, yeah. Um, having great fun. I'm hoping my uh, my fine paint brushes are going to stay fine throughout it. And I'm not going to knacker them. So I'll come back, I think, when... Um, when I'm ready to put the jewels on. All right, I'm almost done now with all the painting of the body and the clothing, etc., etc. I've, you can see, I've um, flocked the base and uh, painted it and dirted it down. Now I've got a dry brush, so we're almost good to go there. Um, obviously, still not got the heads put on. What I have also been doing is um, picking out all the jewels. The next step is the jewel stage. All right. So I've been picking out anything that's going to be a jewel, um, um, mainly in whites, but sometimes, and especially on, on the bigger ones, uh, in a silver, because I'm going to be using clear paints or contrast paints, which are effectively clear paints. All right. So that's the next bit. That's the fun part. I enjoy... Um, I enjoy doing all the uh, the jewels and that. All right, just show you the third one. There's a big silver jewel up there. All right, so um, yeah, I think I'll come back uh, with um, with them done. And here we go. There they are, all done. Um, really pleased how these have come out. Um, it's about the prettiest models I've ever painted. Um, there's an awful lot going on, an awful lot of uh, colours to to do, and uh, what have you. Um, and it, they, they've all been great fun. Really enjoyed these. Looking forward to actually fielding them on the table. Um, yeah, really good fun. I'm 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 glad I've gone over to Slanesh. Um, um, it, it, it's far more of a challenge than when I'm usually, you know, painting my squigs or my spiders or my 
on my Trogos. So uh, yeah, no, really good. Really enjoyed this. And as I say, looking forward to uh, to playing them, hopefully shortly. And uh, here's to the next one. And my next video is going to be these fellas that I picked up yesterday. Yet again, how the hell do you remember this? Mimmy Dish Painbringers. All right. I'm doing this version um, as opposed to that version. All right. I don't like the faces on those at all. And also, if you do them with the helmets, there's no eyes or mouths to paint. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back uh, with a video on those chaps.